Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk about the next uh, country to be to run out of luck in the climate casino. You know, we all live in this climate casino right now. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans with our greenhouse gases. We've changed the heat distribution on the planet. Um, the Arctic is warming like crazy because we're losing uh, sea ice and snow cover exponentially so those white surfaces are being replaced by the dark surfaces underneath like the ocean underneath the sea ice the dark permafrost underneath the snow cover so the arctic is getting a lot darker darker it's warming much much faster than the rest of the planet and that decreases the temperature difference to the equator so the jet streams are slowing down and becoming much wavier and we're seeing these extreme weather events increasing in frequency severity and duration. Um, one of the things is we're getting this weather wilding or whiplashing or weather weirding. So the weather whiplashing, we get lots of rain in California in the winter. Um, all the grasses and shrubs grow like crazy. Then in the summer, everything dries out and we're getting these massive mega fires, which I've vlogged about he here most very recently. Okay. Uh, we have very, very warm ocean temperatures. So, so Nate forms in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, rapidly intensifies and comes ashore in the US. Um, the Arctic sea ice is rapidly going. Like I said, it disrupts the heat balance uh, between the equator and the Arctic, disrupts the jet streams, is directly responsible for extreme weather events. Here's another vlog on the mega fires that we're seeing around the planet. And, uh, you know, the relief efforts, they're, they're, they're pathetic, really. I mean, look at Puerto Rico. It's been abandoned, basically, by the U.S. government. I mean, large portions of the country just without power. And it's going to go on for months and months. And they're going to get, um, you know, maybe bacterial infections maybe cholera, maybe things are gonna happen and we're, there's gonna be, you know, the death toll just keeps rising and rising and nobody seems to, be, you know, same thing in, in, with the fires um, in California. You know, governments are pro proving inept at dealing with these large scale um, disasters that are happening now. It's only gonna get worse. So we have to focus on personal re resilience. You know, we all have to have plans um, try to identify the hazards where we live, try to think of how abrupt climate change, how extreme weather events are going to change things, where we are and what the risks are. And these risks are getting ever larger, so we need to have plans in place to become more resilient as individuals and not expect government to do anything for large periods of time. Okay, um, of course, you know, the waters are so warm, you know, we're getting these massive superstorms, Hurricane Maria, coming right through, taking out Dominica, also affecting, you know, also Puerto Rico, et cetera. Before that, there was Hurricane Irma. Before that, there was Harvey, um, and so on. Okay, so have a look at my website, paulbeckwith.net. It's all there. But in this, I'm going to focus here on Hurricane Ophelia, which is heading up to the, which is making a beeline right now for Ireland and the UK. So this is the latest um, advisory. If you Google National Hurricane Center dot NOAA, N -O -A -A, and click on warnings, cone static images, you get this. So at 11 p.m. Friday, October 13th, this thing is moving. The, sp the forward speed is greatly increased. It's up to 20 miles an hour. The rotation speeds, maximum sustained winds, 100 miles an hour. This is where it is right now. This is the projected path. Um, so it's expected to maintain hurricane strength up to here and then come across Ireland. So it all depends on the, the speed and the temperature of the water. And we've got very, very warm temperatures along this path here. And I'll show you that type of thing. So um, the maximum speed, um, let me show you some of the history of what was happening here. So if I go over here, okay, so this is Wednesday, October 11th at 5 p.m. Okay, 75 mile an hour winds. 
it was only moving at three miles an hour. And then an 11 p.m. advisory on the 11th, it up to 85 miles an hour. Okay, um, and the cone is tightening up. The cone of uncertainty, this is Thursday, October 12th at 11 p.m., uh, 105 miles an hour. Okay, that was the maximum. And then it backed off a little bit by Friday morning, October 13th at 11 a.m. And here we are Friday night, and it's still maintaining strength at 100 miles per hour. Okay, so to get uh, up-to-date information, uh, go to Twitter, put in the hashtag Hurricane Ophelia or Ophelia, okay, and you could look at the latest. So let's just have a look at some of these things. Okay, it's a Cat 2 right now, Category 2, projected to make landfall on Monday, probably lowering to a Cat 1 or a strong uh, tropical storm. But it's going to be a severe storm um, in, in Ireland, it, according to the present trajectory and the strength, etc. Um, if you just go to Ophelia, here you can see an image of the path of the storm. Um, at the moment, expected to go off the, just off the coast, um, and hit um, impacts in the UK on Tuesday, Ireland, um, Sunday late at night, and Monday. Strong winds, rain, um, and uh, you know wind wind damage. Okay, this is the 11 p.m. advisory that I showed you. So, hurricane here coming up. Okay, um, and this was the trajectory. So let's have a look at the sea surface temperature. Okay, so this is the sea surface temperature anomaly here the temp sorry this is temperature anomaly sea surface temperature sea surface temperature anomaly okay so right now it, the, the storm is coming up here and it, it's going through this warm water and then it will loop up this water here as you can see is between two is, is over two degrees celsius uh warmer than normal okay and the normal would be the the average the long-term average um from, okay, we, we messed up here. Uh, sea surface temperature anomaly, the 1971 to 2000 baseline, if you take the average sea surface temperature over that time, take what it is now, take the difference, that's what you see um, the uh, whole North Atlantic plus 0.63 uh, degrees Celsius warmer than normal. This region up to two, two, even three degrees Celsius warmer than normal. And if you go to the sea surface temperature, you can see uh, the magic number is 26 and a half Celsius or 80 Fahrenheit. Anything above that and the hurricane will gain strength. So it'll gain strength as long as it's in these regions here and then it will start losing strength. Now, if it slows down, now the thing is, is it speeded up. It's gone up to 20 miles an hour. So if it keeps a very fast speed when it hits this cold water, it doesn't have a lot of time to lose its strength. If it really slowed down and went through the cold water, then it would weaken a lot more. But it's moving very fast, so it's going to hit as a very strong storm. Okay, this is Climate Reanalyzer, a great site. Um, let's have a look at Earth Null School. So here we are here. Okay, um, just Google Earth Null School. We're looking at the air, at the surface, the winds, and you can see the storm here. Um, these are the surface winds, and it's going to move up here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, cycle through, um, and I've already. Uh, so if we cycle through here, okay. First of all, this is the surface temperatures. Okay, so this is the temperatures. So it's it's warm surface temperatures here, um, and we'll just. It, I'm looking at different places here. You can see the. Temperature. So this is the temperature here, 25.3 degrees Celsius at the surface, and you can see now it's 18.4 degrees Celsius, uh, and the temperature, the air temperature is dropping there. Okay, over here it's a bit colder, so it's warmer here along this line here, so the storm's going to track up in the warmer area. Okay, um, and... Let's just keep going. Okay, th so this is now going through time. You can see the storm, the path of the storm, how it's going to be moving up. So we're down here a day later, 
we're up here and you can see where it's tracking up okay going back to here that's the temperature so I, I cycled back here this is where we are right now and this is the ocean characteristic so this is the wave heights you can see the wave heights here are are very warm very high okay 10.10 .10 meter waves here up in here we've got eight meter waves so it's very very rough underneath the storm right it's the low pressure of the storm is sucking up water upwards so let's just continue um okay so we'll continue cycle okay so let's also have a look at um sea surface temperature Okay, I have to back up now a little bit because there's no data. Okay, so this is the sea surface temperature, uh, 25 degrees, like I said, enough to warm, 24 here, 23, and so on, so that the hurricane can gain strength as long as it's in the red area and it'll start losing strength in this area. Okay, you can see the water's getting colder here. As the hurricane goes across here, it'll lose strength, but if it's moving very fast, it will take time to lose strength, so it will still be a very powerful storm. And if it so, it tr if it traverses this region very quickly, um, it'll be a much more powerful storm than if it traverses this region slowly. And it's moving very fast now because it's being caught up in the in the jet stream, which is coming across. You go look at sea surface temperature anomaly. Um, you can see, you know, the storm is down here and it's tracking up through this area. So this water temperature. You know, 2.3 degrees Celsius warmer than normal, 3 degrees warmer than normal, up here 2 degrees warmer than normal. Okay, so the ocean is much, much warmer than normal, allowing this type of storm to get further and further north um, and maintain its strength. So let's have a look at some of the historical tracks. So if I just um, go to Google, Google Images, Google Historical Tracks of Tropical Cyclones, Okay, and you can get the history, all the, all the cyclones that have happened, all the hurricanes that have happened over time. So I'm, I look here, this is from 1851 in the Atlantic. You can see some storms making it up here. Um, if we go over here, um, okay, so this is, uh, this is uh, storms coming up here, and this is major hurricanes coming up here. Um, and you can go back to what I showed you here, and just click and look at all of these and there's a few more coming up here. So you can see, so what has, what history do we have for hurricanes up in this region? Well, we had Hurricane Debbie in 1961. Okay, powerful storm reached up to category three, came up and caused a lot of damage. This is the path here. This is the track and intensity. So it was a strong storm here and then it weakened as it came up here, but it caused lots of damage to Ireland and the UK in 1961. So I highly recommend, you know, if you live in the UK or Ireland, you want to sort of see, look at the presses, look at the damage that this storm did. And, you know, if uh, Ophelia has the potential to do, to be, to, to cause equal or even larger damage than, than this particular storm, Hurricane Debbie in 1961. So it goes into great detail of the conditions of the storm and the wind speeds at different locations and airports. So, you know, 90 plus mile an hour, 100, 100 mile an hour. Um, and there's lots of information about the damage to Ireland, the damage to the UK, etc. Okay, so I highly recommend, you know, just Google Hurricane Debbie, 1961, go to Wikipedia and find out all about it because this happened before, okay, in 1961. Um, what's going on with Ophelia to get the latest updates? There's all kinds of sources, you know, just find one of the British newspapers or, or Irish newspapers and they have real-time updates here of what's going on with the storm and what time arrival times where, etc. cetera. Um, this is a European model for Monday, okay, that was run on, it was run yesterday. It's valid on Monday coming up and it shows you the speeds here, maximum winds, 112.6 knots multiplied by at 15% and that's about, um, so that's about 130 miles an hour peak winds. And you can see, you know, what we're expecting here. So take the, this, this is gonna be a serious storm for Ireland and the UK. Thank you.